Pete. Hey, honey. You're working this weekend? I was thinking of taking Mina along to the movie theater as a treat. It would be great if we could all go as a family. Want to come with us? Popcorn's on me. Bummer. I'm working this weekend. Boss has been on my case about some presentation materials for ages now, so I thought I'd go in and get them done. You'll just have to go with just the two of you. I see. Ah, uh, before I forget, did you re remember to book off the second of next month as a holiday? It's Mina's last sports day at kindergarten. Damn, I forgot. In any case, I'm probably not going to be able to go anyway. I have a bunch of deadlines to meet around the second, so the boss would never let me take it off. Look, I get that you're busy, but that's what you always say when there's an event at kindergarten coming up. Does your work consist of nothing but deadlines or something? You didn't even go to her entrance ceremony. Yeah, Layla, my job does consist of nothing but deadlines. You got a problem with that? I had deadlines back then too, geez. Just get off my back already. Look, Pete, just calm down now. I'm not here for an argument. Isn't there anything you can do about it this time? We'd both really love it if you came. I totally get how busy you are with work. I know the boss is always on your case, and I don't want to mess things up for you there. But I'd really appreciate it if you made more of an effort to spend time with your family. What am I meant to do, Layla? Work is work. It's not like I enjoy being constantly swamped with deadlines or having an overbearing boss breathing down my neck all the time. But if you like having food on the table, are you just going to have to suck it up? But you hardly ever seem to get days off. Is what they're doing to you even legal? They don't even give you time off for important events when you book months in advance. Surely there must be some way for them to work around the deadline thing with that much notice. Have you ever thought about reporting them to the Labor Standards Committee? Really, Layla? You seriously think that's an option? This is just how it is in my line of work. There's nothing I can do about it. This is just how it is in my line of work. There's nothing I can do about it. I knew what I was getting myself into when I joined the company, so I can hardly start complaining now, can I? It wouldn't just be nonsensical, it'd be rude. Please, just think about it for a moment. When's the last time you and Mina actually went out together? Hmm, when was it? I did take her to kindergarten a few times. That was over two years ago, Pete. Mina doesn't even remember it anymore. Wow. Was it really that long ago? It's scary how fast time flies. Yes, it really was. You haven't been out with her a single time since then, have you? It's getting to her, you know. She misses her dad. She even said something the other day. What did she say? She said, Mommy, why is Daddy never at home? My friends, Daddy, always take them out to play. It's not fair. And it's true. They take them out to the park, the zoo, on camping trips, to theme parks. You know, normal father-daughter stuff. Damn, that's amazing. How are these guys finding time to do this? Don't they have jobs? It's not amazing at all. It's normal. And of course, they have jobs. It's called work-life balance. Anyway, listen, because that's not all of it. That is the part that upset me the most. She asked me, why is our family so different from all my friends' families? Oh, mine. Give me a break. What am I even meant to say? Work is work. What would you have me do? Quit? I'd never ask you to do that. I'm just asking you to pay your daughter a little consideration now and then. Her dad is technically around but she may as well be growing up in a single mother household. You come home so late at night, and the only time she ever gets to see you is for a few minutes at the breakfast table in the morning before you rush off to work. Your own daughter is gonna forget who you are if you carry on like this. Don't be so dramatic, like Sophia could ever forget me. She's not a goldfish. You don't know, do you? What I'm saying? Of course you don't. Sophia only draws pictures of me. Pictures? Yes. 
Your daughter loves to draw pictures, and I'm the only parent who's ever in them. She'll come running over. Mommy, look, I drew a picture of our family. But apparently me, her, and Mr. Bobbins, the cat, are the only members of her family as she's concerned, because you're never anywhere to be seen. She hasn't drawn you once. I think she's forgetting who you are. Seriously? Oh, man. That's why you need to start spending more time with her. Why don't you take her to the zoo or something? And when I say that, I mean soon. Remind her you exist. All right, I will. How is Sunday the 30th? I'm crazy busy that day. But you're always busy. We knew that already. It doesn't necessarily have to be the 30th. Just make whatever adjustments to your schedule you need to. And go to the zoo with your daughter. All right. Fine. I will see if I can get the 30th off. You better not cancel on her at the last minute. It would break her little heart. If you do cancel, me and your daughter will never be able to trust you again. I'll have no choice but to raise her as a single mother. Because let's face it, that's what you've made me into. Jeez, Layla. Fine, I get it. I already said I'll take her. You don't have to threaten me. It's going to be midnight soon. Aren't you a little late coming home? Is everything okay? You're supposed to be taking Mina to the zoo in the morning. You didn't forget, did you? It's just... Listen, Layla, there was some trouble at work. That's why I'm running a little later than usual. I thought you adjusted your schedule. So you get off early today to get ready for your day out tomorrow. How the heck is it almost midnight? I made you something to eat because you told me you'd be home early. I'm sorry. That was originally the plan, I swear. You and Sophia have to be up early tomorrow morning to catch the bus for the zoo in time, don't you? I'm over the moon about you taking her out. Really, I am. But you're going to spend your first day in two years together, dragging your feet around like some sleep-deprived zombie at this rate. Yeah, you're right. I think we might have to leave a little later than we planned. Please tell me you're not about to cancel on your daughter. Of course not. We're going. We're going. It's just that trouble at work I mentioned. No one could have seen it coming. I swear, I didn't want to get out early, but I had to stay behind to deal with some fallout. But we are going to the zoo, I promise. We are. So just chill, okay, babe? Sophia's so excited. She can barely contain herself. I'm begging you, Pete. Please don't let your daughter down this time. I said chill. Seriously, there is nothing to worry about. I'll be home within the next... 30 minutes. The guys at the office weren't actually done dealing with the crap that happened, but I just said screw it and left anyway, and there was no way I could stay any longer. I don't have time to get dragged into endless work drama when I have a date with my daughter planned for tomorrow. So what actually happened? So there's this client we meet with a few times a week, and I'm not exaggerating when I say this. He's the biggest pain in the ass I've ever met in my life. To cut a long story short, he flipped out when he realized he'd made some tiny alterations to it for his proposal due to budget issues, and the whole office descended into chaos. Anyway, don't worry about it. I'll wash my hands of the place when I realize that I might not make it in time for my early start tomorrow. I can deal with it when I go back on Monday. My only priority now is enjoying mine and my daughter's day out at the zoo tomorrow. I see. Well, I want you to know... I really appreciate that, Pete. Okay, I'm waiting for your supper. See you soon. Be as quick as you can. Did you find her? No, she's nowhere to be seen. Where the hell did she go? I just ran over to the Lost Child Center at the far end of the zoo, but they said they hadn't seen or heard anything. I see. Damn it. What do we do? I wonder if they'll check the surveillance cameras for us. Should we just go around asking random people if they've seen her? Layla, just calm down. We've got to have our head screwed on properly right now. 
The zoo staff have already said they'll keep their eyes peeled for any sign of her, right? That's a lot of pairs of eyes, so don't worry. We'll find her soon. I just know it. Let's meet up and look together. How can you tell me to calm down at a time like this? We've been looking for her for a whole hour, and we haven't found so much as a clue to where she might have gone. What if she got involved in some kind of accident? Or worse, what if someone took her? No way. Don't even say things like that, Layla. She's probably wandering around aimlessly at some less visited parts of the zoo as we speak. Ah, that's it. I bet she just went off to try and find the pandas. You know how much she loves pandas, right? Right, honey? I can't take this anymore. I'm calling the police. No. Stop. You mustn't. Just hold on. There's no need to do anything drastic. Why? Because you'll have half the police in the state down here, and they'll have to shut the zoo down. You can't do that for a little girl wandering off to find some pandas. It's embarrassing. She just got lost. Like I said, we're sure to find her if you just keep looking. Are you saying there's absolutely no possibility that she's been taken by some weirdo? You see that kind of thing happen all the time on the news these days. She might not even be at the zoo anymore for all we know. They could have taken her anywhere. Chill out. It's fine. How can you say that? You can't possibly know. We have to consider all scenarios here, especially the worst ones. But this just isn't the kind of thing that justifies calling the cops. Do you have any idea how much money it costs them to send out search parties for stuff like this? How can you be so nonchalant? It's almost like you don't care. What the hell has gotten into Pete? Your daughter has been missing for over an hour. Crying out loud? You're not even a little bit worried about her, are you? Of course I am. I'm just trying not to lose my head like you are. The only way we're going to find her is by keeping cool. Liar. You're more worried about the freaking police budget than you are about finding your daughter. If you really cared, you'd stop at nothing to track her down. Why can't we call the cops? Surely it's best to call them on the off chance she's in danger. Ugh. How many times do I have to tell you? Mina's fine. And how many times do I have to ask you how you can say that? The only way you could say that is if you knew where she was. Wait a sec. No way. Do you know? Do you know where she is? And there it is. The crazy talk begins. Jesus Christ, Layla, how the hell would I know that? You do, don't you? You know something, don't you? Tell me. That's the only way you could possibly be this calm. No father on this planet would react to his daughter going missing. Tell me the truth now. Look, I really don't know where she is, and that's the truth. But I do know she's not alone. What does that mean? How do you know that? Mina's just with someone called Hallie. Right now, I just got a message. Hallie? What? Who's Hallie? Well, you could say that she's an acquaintance. Pete, are you... Oh my god. You're not having an affair, are you? Whoa there. Wait a sec. No, 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 no. It's not that at all. Then explain yourself. I'm not messing around here. Tell me what's going on right this instant. Layla, I'm so sorry. All right. Fine. I may have cheated on you. Oh my god. I can't believe it. I'm so sorry. I swear I am. I never thought this would happen. It was never my intention to cheat. It kind of just happened. You lying, cheating, lowlife scumbag. Now tell me where my Mina's been for the last hour. And tell me why she's with your bimbo mistress. Ugh, explain yourself now. Look, Layla, Hallie has high hopes and aspirations of her own. She says she wanted to take everything from you. From me? What? She says she wants to steal everything you have. 
which includes stealing me by becoming my wife. It also includes Mina and the house. She wants everything, and she'll stop at nothing to get her way. What on earth? She wants to steal everything I have? But I don't even know her. Why does she hate me so much? This makes no sense. Have we met before? Did I do something to upset her? Well, I can't claim to understand how a woman's mind works. Uh, I think I can. She probably just hates me because she wanted to get her claws into you. But she saw me, your wife, as just standing in her way. She's jealous, so she wants to take everything I have to satisfy her twisted ambitions. I don't know, Layla. I think she just enjoys a feeling of motherhood she gets from being around Sophia. She always talks about how much she loves kids, and how great it'd be to have some of her own someday. If you ask me, she just wants to be a mom. I want you to know she'd never do anything to hurt Sophia. She's in safe hands. But what if Sophia doesn't want to be around her? Then there's no telling what she might do then. She might lose her temper and hurt herself when she realizes she can't get her own way. If she's deranged enough to abduct someone else's daughter, she's capable of anything. No way. She's not like that. She'd never hurt Sophia. I'm sure of it. She'd never do anything that reckless, I swear. She abducted our freaking daughter at the zoo, Pete. She was hardly the picture of sanity to begin with, was she? I bet she followed us, waiting for her opportunity to, to strike, and then snatched her as soon as we weren't looking. Normal human beings do not behave like this. This is the kind of thing you see in crime documentaries about psychopaths. How can you be so sure she won't hurt Sophia? All right. Fine. You do have a point. I'm hurt enough that you cheat on me? But could you at least not have cheated on me with someone who doesn't act like an escaped mental patient? What attracted you to a lunatic like her? What the hell is wrong with you, Pete? No, no, no. Hallie never used to be like this. It was only recently she started acting weird. I've got a feeling the reason we're pulling this crazy stunt today might have something to do with us fighting yesterday. Wait, you met her yesterday too? Is that why you came home from work so late? I thought you said there was some trouble at the office with a client. Look, fine. I'll tell you the truth. It's Hallie's birthday today. But since you wouldn't stop nagging at me to spend time with you and Sophia, I had no choice but to cancel our day. When I did, she completely lost it. I tried to be diplomatic, but there was no reasoning with her. She was so furious, it was like I was speaking to a different person. You mean she pulled a guilt trip on you? It probably went something like, Who's more important to you? Me or your family, huh? Am I right? Um, yeah. That's exactly what she said, actually. But I told her my family is more important. That's why I'm here with you guys today. Have you even heard yourself, Pete? You cheated on me for crying out loud. You've got some nerve to claim me and Sophia matter to you. The only reason this is happening is because of you. This is all your fault. I'll never forgive you. Huh? My fault? Obviously it's all your fault. Who else is there to blame? I'm so sorry. Quit with your empty, meaningless apologies and listen to me. You will contact your disturbed psycho of a mistress and find out where she is with my daughter immediately. But, but she might get mad again. Surely you don't want to poke the bear while she still has Sophia. That's why you're going to message her with a groveling apology for choosing your family over her. You let her know how sorry you are, what a huge mistake you've made, and you find out where she is without a single shot being fired by pretending to be on her side. I'm sure you can come up with something. Let's meet up, babe, me, you, and Sophia. Now we can be a real family. You come up with some bullcrap like that about how special she is to you? So she lets her guard down 
and you find out exactly where she is with our daughter. Got it. All right, I can do this. What do we do once we know where they are? Should I go alone and bring Sophia back? And how exactly do you intend to do that? By force? Didn't you just say we shouldn't poke the bear? She's clearly unhinged already. Do you really think a physical confrontation is the most intelligent way to solve this? Sure, she could direct her anger towards you. In which case, I can't particularly say I'd care, but Sophia could get hurt too, which I am absolutely not willing to risk. We need to leave this to the professionals. The professionals? I'm calling the police. Come on, Layla. I understand you're scared, but wouldn't you rather avoid this becoming a police matter? This is just a personal problem. At the end of the day, let's solve it amongst ourselves. You mean you're terrified of the embarrassment of people finding out what a horrible husband, father, and human being you are? Well, it would involve you telling the police about the affair, wouldn't it? It would be just as embarrassing for you as it would be for me. Our daughter could be in danger. And you're worried about your goddamn reputation? You make me sick. What she did is a crime. This became a police matter the moment she abducted our daughter. How much more evidence do you need that she's crazy? Normal, stable people do not act like this. Our daughter's been abducted and being held hostage as we speak. And you don't want me to call the police? What do you think the police even exist for? If not stuff like this, there's no time to waste. We have to get Sophia back. Fine. You better not say anything to alarm her. She's unpredictable and dangerous, and she needs to stay calm. Make her think you're on her side and find out where she is. Do it now. Okay. Okay, I'm waiting. Get in touch with her now. What are you waiting for? Hurry up! Do it! How did it go? Where are you? You told me not to try to approach them to prevent Hallie doing anything crazy, so I'm just hanging back right now. The police just handed Mina back to me. She has no injuries and seems more or less okay. She did cry a little, but I think that's just because she was confused and missing her mom. She doesn't seem too shaken. Phew, thank God for that. So the cops got her back from Hallie and made sure she was safe? What happened with Hallie? Well, she lost her temper and started running around trying to fly roundhouse kick the cops. It took seven officers to restrain her. She even managed to injure two of them. It looks like assaulting police officers is going to be added onto the child abduction charges. It took seven cops to restrain Hallie? A single woman? But she's tiny. She was like a woman possessed. One of the officers said she had the strength of ten men. It's a miracle Mina didn't get hurt. I'm so relieved. Hallie's lost her mind. God, what's she playing at? To think, she tried to take on seven cops all by herself. I never knew she had it in her to be so violent. I feel like I barely know her anymore. It's funny you should say that, because I feel like I barely know you either. You're the one who caused all this. Apparently, she was screaming like a banshee the whole time, like a whirlwind of unbridled fury fueled by a mixture of misplaced motherly instincts, jealousy, and insanity. Oh. And there was this one more thing. She said you and her were supposed to get married? You wouldn't happen to know anything about this, would you? It just so happens that the reason she flipped out is because you betrayed her, would it? I mean, you do have a track record of betrayal. So I think I already know the answer. Wait, what? No. I never said I'd marry her. That's a load of nonsense. I bet you told her a pack of convenient lies. Just like the kind you always used with me. I hope you didn't think you were off the hook. 
just because I was focusing all my efforts on her when she had Mina. Don't forget, you are the one who caused all this by cheating on me with her in the first place. I'm really sorry from the bottom of my heart. I'll never forgive myself for getting so wrapped up in all this. I'm not interested in your apologies. We have more important things to discuss. This woman is still obsessed with you. There's no telling what she might do next. What if she wants revenge against me or Mina? We might still be in danger. Do we have to live our whole lives in fear of reprisals now? Don't worry about that. We'll get the cops to arrest her, right? Even if she did want to take revenge on us, what's she going to do from inside a cell? She's not going to be in prison forever. You know how lax the justice system can be. They release murderers early on good behavior. So we can hardly count on her being locked up forever for this. What if she pretends she's remorseful and sorry to trick you into letting your guard down so she can get in close and make her move? Surely, even when she does get released, they'll admit her to a psych ward before she can roam free in society again. Even if that was the case, she'd get out of there eventually too. I don't think you're getting my point here, Pete. As long as we're with you, there's a chance that me and Mina might still be in danger. Do you understand what I'm saying? Go on, tell me. I want a divorce. I can't let you drag me or our daughter into your dangerous shenanigans any more than you already have. No, don't say that. Layla, I understand how you feel, but let's not be hasty here. Who knows, she might forget about me in prison. She may be obsessed now, but that's not to say we'll be that way forever. That's right. She'll have a long, hard think about her behavior while she serves a sentence, realize she acted foolishly, and give up on the whole thing. I'm sure of it. You don't know that? That's just what you hope will happen. We have to consider the worst case scenario and act in the best interest of our daughter at all times. This is no joke when Mina's safety is at stake. Yeah, you're right, but... No buts. If cutting you out of our lives is what it takes to keep her safe, then so be it. And I'll do it without an ounce of regret. You betrayed me, Pete. You lied and you cheated for so long. And you know what? You probably would have carried on if Hallie didn't do what she did. In a way, I'm grateful. But you and Mina are my world. I love you. I've been doing a lot of soul searching, and this whole thing made me realize... It made me realize what really matters to me. You love us? You've got some nerve. You didn't care about me or your daughter one bit until now. Like I said, I only just realized. My priorities are all out of whack. I should have treated you guys better. I should have spent more time with my family. Hallie means nothing to me. I'm sorry it took all this to make me realize that. If you really love me and your daughter, except the divorce. If Sophia really is your number one priority, you'll do the right thing and get out of our lives. Let's say I did. What then? What if Hallie keeps stalking me? I have no idea what she's capable of. She might even try to hurt me. Are you telling me I have to face all that alone? This was all you're doing. You have no one else to blame but yourself. You made your bed. Now lie in it. Why would me and our daughter stick around when you yourself have admitted you might be in danger. What are we to you? Human shields? Layla, at least answer me this. If one day I was to disappear, would you come looking for me? Nope. You're not my problem anymore. Let's face it. You are hardly ever around to begin with. Me and Sophia will probably have forgotten you by next week. After receiving a psychological examination, Hallie was deemed not criminally responsible for her actions on account of insanity and admitted to a high security mental hospital. Apparently, even during the examination, she was still convinced that Sophia was her own daughter. It was only right that she be deemed a danger to the public with delusions like that. Who's to say what she'd do if she was allowed to roam free 
for the sake of mine and Sophia's safety. I divorced Pete and moved a long, long way away. Somewhere the jilted mistress would never find us, just to be safe. I saw to it that Pete would play as small a role as possible in his daughter's life for the foreseeable future. Thankfully, both our families agreed. Understanding that Sophia's safety should be everyone's number one priority, Pete told me he did get a phone call from the psych ward at one point, but Hallie told him it didn't look like she was going to be getting discharged anytime soon. Hallie's parents said the reason her daughter lost her mind was because of how Pete used, manipulated, and toyed around with her like she was some plaything before tossing her aside like a piece of trash. When he was done, they were so furious, they hired a first-class lawyer and took my ex-husband to court. Last I heard, the trial is still ongoing. I get phone calls from a desperate-sounding Pete every now and then, complaining of how much his life sucks now and how he's never going to be able to afford the compensation they're demanding. But I just ignore them. He's getting exactly what he deserves. Hopefully, this gives him pause to think about his disgraceful behavior. Who knows? Maybe it's not too late for him to become a good person. Anything's possible.